Welcome to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins. Today we're going to be painting a rooster, continuing with the farm theme. The reference image is from pixabay.com and my patrons on my Patreon page will have access to this photo. And if you haven't yet subscribed, I hope you will and click that little bell icon to be notified of future videos. Hello and welcome to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins and I'm bringing you another farm related painting of some chickens. Each month in the Monet Cafe art group on Facebook, we have a theme and this month it happens to be the farm. It can be anything farm related from barns to gardens to farm animals. And today I look forward to teaching on painting chickens and or perhaps a rooster. So it should be fun. So let's get started. Oh, and I'm once again wearing a Love in Faith t-shirt. These have become my go-to t-shirts because they're so comfortable and they have these great messages of hope. So if you would like to get one, I have a link in the description section along with a 20% off coupon code. Okay, now we can paint. Some of you know that I'm working away from my home studio, still in the basement of my parents' home since my mother passed away. And I am using a set of Sennelier pastels. I love this 120 half stick set. It's called the Paris Collection. I use primarily those pastels, but I think I grab a couple more to work on this painting. Now here is the surface that I'm working on, Sennelier Le Carte Pastel Card. It comes in pads like this. This is the price on Dick Blick, but I also have my Amazon shop where I organize a lot of the products from my videos. Be sure to double check though if you can get a price better in other places. Sometimes it's cheaper on Amazon and sometimes it's cheaper on Dick Blick or other art retailers. So be sure you check, but it's a neat way you can check out my Amazon shop, see many of the products neatly organized that you can check out. I, I even have some of my studio tools, so you can check that out if you like. Now, often when I get started with a painting, I like to do some sort of a sketch. And for this rooster, it was primarily just to get that gestural quality. I really wanted him to look like he was just crowing his heart out. I just used a charcoal pencil on some newsprint, and then I transferred a similar sketch onto my Sennelier Le Carte pastel card. Now I'll talk about the surface more as I paint. And unfortunately, I missed a little bit of the beginning footage I really have a lot going on right now being away from my studio, but I think you will be able to see enough to get the idea. Now, here's where I wanna talk about this surface, and I love using the Sennelier pastels on the Sennelier Le Carte pastel card. Being from the same company, being manufactured from the same company, they just work together so beautifully. But I also love all kinds of other pastels used on this surface. Now, what is interesting about the surface? Oh, first of all, this is from one of the pads. The 12 by 16, I think, is the size of the pad. And it is kind of like a really pale blue, um, gray, blue-gray color. And it comes with various colors within the pad. But what I like, I have sped this video up slightly just to be able to get it uploaded. I didn't want it to be too long. And what I like about this surface is, well, first of all, it's a sanded pastel paper. If you're brand new to pastels, there are sanded papers that actually really are great for the pastel medium. Now you can work on unsanded papers. My previous two or three videos in this farm theme month have been on unsanded paper. So you can work on unsanded paper, but this Sennelier Pastel Le Carte is sanded and the texture I find to be um, so wonderful for getting nice even strokes with a nice consistency. Also too, it's called Pastel Card because it's more like cardstock. It's thicker than some other pastel papers. So, I'll talk a little bit more about this paper perhaps, but let me talk a little bit about the painting process. Basically, I find that this surface is great for painting animals, uh, even portraits and landscapes, but one of the reasons I like it for animals is I find that the layering ability you can really use in your favor. Sanded papers give you the opportunity to create quite a few layers, unlike unsanded papers, and I find the layering ability is such a benefit with animal fur or animal feathers. You're gonna see me creating these feathers and I'm gonna talk about that. But the reason is because often 
With pastels, we can work dark to light. We typically, not always, lay down darker values and then lighter values on top of it. And with these feathers, you're going to see me doing just that. You'll probably notice that I reserve my lightest values, such as some of those bright feathers on his neck and on his tail towards the end. Like you can see, I'm getting down kind of a um, dark brick reddish color for his neck. Oh, I wanted to go ahead and get this beak in. Now this to me was important to get that little gestural quality to his beak. So I'm trying to make a little lively stroke here so that it really looks like he's crowing. And um, again, I'm using kind of the brick red color and then I'm going on top of it and layering some of the other colors. What that does is it gives a contrast for the feathers to lay on top of it. If I just went in there and used just the color that I see, uh, it would look very segmented and it wouldn't have a lot of depth to it. So you'll notice as I work that that's the typical method of operation is to get some dark values down specifically on his body and where his feathers are and then gradually work the lighter values on top of it to get that differentiation between colors and values. I also want to mention the pressure that I'm using here. Often we think when we're first starting with soft pastels, I'm, I'm talking to myself here because this is what I did, that we really want to get a solid application of color. So we press rather hard and what that can do is it can decrease your ability to get more layers down and also cause your painting to look rather flat or muddied. So even though when we're first starting out, I have a lot of comments from just the YouTube channel and even from some of my patrons on my Patreon page of my pastels aren't applying very smoothly or solidly on the surface. Look at his chest, for example. You see how I have a little bit of that dark down and you can really see a lot of the paper behind it. That's okay, embrace that. Don't feel the need to just press so hard and get that color all down because they gradually start to layer themselves. I'm sorry, I got my head in the way. I was trying to get a, a little idea of where his eye is. Now there are a couple of areas here where I do give a bit more pressure and get it darker, but that's because if you look at the reference image, it is dark. I'm not going to be needing to put many layers over that particular section. So just keep that in mind. Reserve the ability to layer by decreasing the amount of pressure that you give. A light touch is the right touch. I think many artists have said that. I've heard Karen Margulis say it and, and others, but uh, who knows who originates these comments, but we all share together as artists. That's the great thing. I am now focusing on getting some of the darker values in. By the way, I think this is a very small sliver of a Terry Ludwig eggplant color. It's a really dark, deep purple and like an eggplant, you know, it looks black, but it's really got some purple to it. And I'm specifically working in areas where I see dark values. A great trick to be able to do this is just to squint your eyes and you can see where all the dark areas are. I loved his tail, how it had, oh, it had a combination of blues and greens and teals. It was so gorgeous. But I wanted to get those shadowy undersides of the feathers in first before I add any of those blues. And you know, the same thing with underneath uh, where his legs are. You can see that's, that's like totally dark down there. It's in shadow and I think the feathers are probably black. So, you know, this all kind of creates a little roadmap for you to know um, how to apply things. Now, I'm using a purple here because this portion of his chest is not quite as dark as that front side of his chest. And so I'm giving a little bit of a lighter value I often say value is king. Um, what's the expression? Value is king, but color gets the glory, something like that. But basically the good news is that you don't have to have the largest selection of soft pastel colors. If you get the value right, you can be a little creative with color. You know, that wasn't the exact color I needed, that purple but it was pretty close in uh, the value that I was looking for. Now, as I often say, when I have a pastel in my hand, I like to go ahead and use it somewhere else where I see a similar value. Keep in mind, I'm not necessarily looking at colors often early on as much as I am value. I know now that even though this looks a little dark for that underside of his neck, I need some darker values for contrast. I know I'm gonna lay those feathers in directional strokes, so they look like feathers, 
on top of this and it needs some contrast for the feathers to show up otherwise they're going to look very flat and here's where you can see i've got the purple down and now i'm just giving some little directional strokes really just looking at how his feathers are and i know i'm going to get a little bit brighter color on top of that but keep in mind working dark to light this is that was actually kind of close to what the color and the value is um, from the reference image Here's where I actually am getting a little bit lighter value, um, just maybe where the sun is kind of hitting some of those upper feathers that are cascading down his neck. And by the way, one of the reasons I chose to work with this Sennelier Paris Collection Soft Pastel set is because it has such an amazing assortment of reds and oranges and golds, and I thought it would be a great set to work with for this particular painting. And like I said, I was working on Sennelier Le Carte pastel cards, so I knew that would be a beautiful combination. I think I used primarily this, this set of pastels. And just so you know, the Sennelier Paris collection is a half stick set. You get 120 pastels in half of their normal size. And I always recommend this to beginner artists because you get double the colors for your money. Uh, until you get you know a lot of experience and you know the colors you like you sometimes you're just experimenting with colors so why not get more and uh, that just gives you more options now you can see how I am uh, adding a little bit of those uh, teal kind of colors right now I got a kind of a neutral bluish teal and I'm getting a little bit more darks so you see how I layered it over some of the Terry Ludwig uh, eggplant color and I also am layering it a little bit over some of that purple and now you might see what I mean where when you just keep a light touch and you continue to layer gradually you don't see the surface of the paper anymore and it's okay if sometimes you do still see the surface of the paper I think that lends towards the painterly effect so I'm just making sure I have the right values down now um, to be accurate and to be able to get some of the feathers layered on top I really did like that little subtle bit of greenish bluish color on his chest it was still very dark but it was just such a beautiful color it almost looks iridescent you'll also see me in a bit adding um, a little bit of blues and I sort of juxtapose the blues and the greens next to each other because they they create almost a new color and seem almost to vibrate a little when they're next to each other I have a video that I, I'm in the process of creating that I, I'm excited to share where I discuss that with soft pastels often we say we can't mix soft pastel colors like you can with oil acrylic or watercolor and that's true we don't like combine them and mix them up they're not in liquid form but to say that we can't get new color combinations with pastels uh, is not true we actually can we can do it by layering soft layering we can do it by layering colors next to each other little little strokes or lines kind of like I've been doing with the feathers so it is kind of neat and fun to know that with soft pastels we can have some fun with color and get some interesting combinations based on how we apply them the video I have just prior to this one was on how you can create neutral colors with pastels even if you don't have a neutral pastel stick, you basically can layer two complementary colors. Those are just colors opposite on the color wheel and with a, a light stroke. And it will, even if they're bold colors, it will neutralize them. And then you can add white if you want to lighten it up. So we can get new color combinations by using soft pastels. Uh, but still, you know, we really do want every color under the sun. <laughs> we can't help that. And I get that, me too. Now, thus far, this has only been sped up slightly, but to make this video a little shorter, I am going to speed it up a little bit more here and add some music, but I wanted to mention, I like to talk about my patrons just to brag on them and thank them. I'm so grateful for those of you who have become patrons of mine from my Patreon page, patreon.com slash Susan Jenkins. It's $5 a month to support this channel. You get extra content and I also get to see your works. My patrons have a homework album where they can submit their paintings from these lessons for me and the other patrons to see and I just feel so blessed to be able to see what other artists are creating from my lessons. So I just love that. And we have lots of other um, 
benefits to becoming a patron as well. So anyway, bless you patrons. Thank you. I can't wait to see uh, this rooster. I loved your last farmhouse paintings from that lesson. Oh, and the duck lesson and the piggy lesson. And oh, it's really blessed me so much since losing my mama. I know if many of you have followed this channel, you know this has been really hard. I know a lot of you guys have shared with me your stories too. And so we press on and art is healing and it does bless us through these trials and this grief. So, and your paintings have definitely been blessing me. It's given me just a bright spot in my world. So God bless you all. All right, now I am gonna speed this up to music. I want you to stay tuned to the end though. I'm gonna have more commentary at the end. Of course, you get to see the grand finish and enjoy this music while I speed it up a little more and I'll be back soon.
Okay, so this is a legless chicken, so we got to fix that. And I have basically learned, and I'm still learning, I'm always still learning, that with birds' legs and feet, we don't want to draw too much attention to them, or unless, you know, there's something in their claws or you're trying to bring attention purposely to it. But I find that often if we overwork them or make them too thick or too stiff, they look artificial. And so I like to try to still give them a little bit of delicacy and make them not too awfully thick or too awfully detailed. So what I'm doing, I'm just giving using some cooler colors to give a little bit of shadow to the back side of the leg and also a little bit of shadow underneath the toes. And I did use a little bit of a lighter pastel to kind of give it those little ringlets that are in the uh, feet of chickens and roosters but I'm doing it very delicately because once again, I don't want the feet to draw so much attention uh, that it pulls you away from the beautiful feathers and from his gesture of crowing. Even a shadow underneath him, like in the reference photo, but I'm going to be adding, remember how we work darker to lighter? I'm gonna be adding some lighter highlights of that hay that's kind of sticking up in place some places very randomly. As I was painting, I realized he looked like the star of the barnyard and it almost like he was in a spotlight, <laughs> like he's singing as the uh, lead singer in an opera or something. So I guess I just kind of personify things a lot. And while I am adding some interest to the foreground with the indication of hay or straw, I wanna be careful to keep it very subtle, loose, and not to draw the viewer's eye to the bottom of the painting. So we want the viewer to go right in and up to that rooster's head, which is the obvious main focal point. Uh, you may have noticed as I was doing the background with that barn, I started to get in the some of the, more of the details of the shadows that were on the left-hand side in the background. And I realized it was detracting from the rooster. So that's why I decided to really soften it and simplify it, that's a better word. And just kind of keep it, you know, uh, nondescript. It's just some sort of a barn in the background that adds interest but doesn't steal the show. We want the rooster to steal the show. I also wanted to mention that these reds were so darn vibrant, and I'm, I mean that in a good way, that I found that my camera had a hard time accommodating for the brilliance of the red. And the video of it actually showed more accurate colors than a photograph. And once again, I'm away from my home studio. I don't have the lighting that I normally have, so you just work with what you have. That's what I'm always telling you guys. So, um, now I did work a little bit more on the head. I had not given him much personality yet. I felt like his eye was a little undeveloped and too small, but I had somebody come visit me while I was painting and I should have stopped painting and I feel like I got his head a little bit too large or something. But anyway, here he is in all of his crowing glory. You can see a little bit more of the close up of the feathers and uh, just some of the brilliance of the colors. Once again, I love the Sennelier set, the Sennelier pastel card. There I am in the reflection. So I hope you learned something. God bless you all. I'm so grateful for those of you who are subscribers here to my patrons and to all of those in Monet Cafe Art Group on Facebook. Happy painting.